what's up guys i hope you're all doing well for those of you that are new to the channel you're watching bob's decline lyman blogger where we pretty much cover anything and everything that has to do with power lines and being alignment so my name is aaron and today we're on scene at a vehicle accident now i'm very careful as to what i show when it comes to vehicle accidents especially if there's any injuries and stuff online on social media but today we've got everything cleaned up right now uh, this is all that's left here you can see that pole's a little bit short and the bumper still in the ditch there but i actually used a set of come alongs to straighten that pole up and get it out of the way of the vehicle that was jammed up against it not too long ago We're going to be changing that pole. Uh, I had quite a few requests to cover a pole change out. Now this one isn't going to be too exciting. Um, there's no power lines on this pole. It's a communication pole. We had an overhead guy on it holding up one of our three phase poles, which by the way, thank goodness they did not hit this guy here. It would have knocked a thousand people out of power. So we're going to be working across the street changing out that pole there. You can see the down guy. I've got it secured down tight so it doesn't get up into that open wire secondary. We got a staple end up in the air, and uh, a bunch of communication lines down on the ground. We get all those cut clear for now. See here where I had the come alongs, and uh, we hooked them onto the butt of the pole. You see the butt of the pole was jammed right into the car, and uh, those cables aren't coming down. So we just crank on that pole, drug it out of the way from the car. And then the tow truck was able to yank him out of the ditch right through those tracks right there. So, boys still aren't here yet. I'm gonna clean up the work area a bit. I was over, get some stuff prepped up around the pole and there's a ton of just small trees growing around. So we're gonna cut those up. Can't use a chainsaw until the boys arrive. It's for safety reasons, we're gonna have two guys on site so don't laugh guys, I'm gonna be cutting some trees with a sawzall. But I did pick up this blade which is supposed to be made for uh, pruning, pruning clean wood, carbide teeth. Anyhow, we're gonna try it out, see if we can't rip through some trees and clean up that work area a little bit. Sun's going down there now, which is perfect because it was right in the eyes of the oncoming traffic there a few minutes ago. So that could be a major hazard from working on the side of the road. Flaggers or not. All right, let's try this thing out. I've actually haven't used it yet, so I'm not sure how well she's gonna work. Oh great, another broken pole. Let's see. Beauty. Oh, here comes the backup. Alright, so we decided to go with uh, cutting the pole. We're going to float the lines, completely cut the pole apart. Uh, we had a little bit of a tailboard amongst us and figured that'd be the easiest road. And uh, yeah, we're going to get the auger out. Right now I'll get the fellow working out of the small truck, cleaning that up. And we're going to back him out of the way, get the corner mount in there, start digging our hole here in a minute.
Extend out. Four, four, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Yep. There you go. Just swing and attach. Swing a little bit. Yep. All right, man, it is getting chilly out there now. So the way we set this pole, you never grab a pole from the cop like that. I shouldn't say never, because we just did. But uh, so the way we set the pole here, the, the, the hole is quite a ways down low in the ditch. And uh, grab the pole low enough to get that boom in underneath the telephone it, it would have been too top heavy we wouldn't have had control of the pole at all the the tip of the boom's got the jaws where you see it splits open normally that's where you pick up the pole you put your winch line around it when you suck that up into those jaws then you have real good control of that pole now in this circumstance we dropped it down in between the telephone lines which worked out pretty good you don't have as much control of the pole. Um, biggest thing there is you do not stand underneath any load at all, guys. You're lifting the transformer, pad mount, pole, whatever it is, you do not stand underneath it. A few quick things I wanted to go over. When uh, when they're digging the hole, you want that hole to go on straight. So you got your auger coming in, you have that auger dangling. And as you're digging and it's lowering down, it'll change the angle of your auger. So the operator is gonna watch, um, like myself, I was watching the hole, so you're giving them hand signals as you dig. So the hand signals that we use are universal, whereas like if you're gonna say boom down, thumbs down, boom up, boom up, dig, reverse, forward. And uh, if you want them to extend like that, retract as in like that, there's all kinds of hand signals that are universal between our trade uh, crane operators that we use to communicate. Um, it is the middle of the night, we get flashlights on our head. You're looking up at the guy and that flashlight shining in his face it can be pretty hard to see so we're kind of yelling back and forth at each other as we're going there to stand or track stuff like that so the biggest thing is communication you don't want to be operating machinery of any kind especially with somebody close by blindly so if you can't see what's going on you're not moving nothing you want to make sure every move you make is calculated and that both the operator and the other people in the job and work are aware of the movements um, and what they're doing next so we got a load of fill coming there now we got the pole in place everything's ready to go and uh, we got our stores guy coming with a pickup truck there wasn't quite enough fill when that pole got pushed over it moved all the earth well you can see that piece of pole I didn't touch but it started right there the car hit it and yanked that right through the ground all the way over there. The top of this guy was sitting on the car up over there until we used the rope and hauled it off the car so we could tow him out. Kind of compacted it so the, the hole's way bigger than it should be. So we got a load of tailings coming. We're going to throw that in there. Real easy stuff to tamp, easy stuff to shovel. Just like cement, once that's in there, that pole will not move. And then now uh, we're going to attach those phone lines. We, something like this, easy job. We'll, we'll do all the telephone, all the cable. We'll, we'll have everything done here before we leave. And then we'll fill out some paperwork and solve, send the uh, telephone company the bill. And that's it, we'll head off to the office. I'll probably follow the boys over to the office and uh, help them clean things up a little bit. All right guys, so that wraps up another one. It was pretty easy actually, as far as uh, pole changeout's concerned. There was uh, the only part that belonged to us was the overhead guy. The rest was all the phone company, the cable company, even the pole itself. 
belong to the phone company. So what I'm doing now, I'm actually filling out some paperwork to bill them for the work that we did. And then we're gonna go after the insurance from the vehicle that hit the pole, a bunch of stuff that happens behind the scenes there. I actually, I wish I had my camera rolling towards the end of the job, uh, a young couple driving a white Mercedes Benz blew through our flagger stop signs, almost hit him, um, creamed all of our cones, just about smashed into our work trailer. It was not good. Um, spooked us quite a bit, kind of had to jump out of the way a bit. Um, then they took off, swerving on the road, so we called the police there. Hopefully they were able to catch up to that Mercedes. Uh, very dangerous stuff. So, uh, yeah, it, a huge advantage to having that dash cam running. I would have caught, caught their plate on camera. Uh, actually, something else I would have caught on camera. Just the other day, we were heading to a job and a, like a hybrid coyote wolf kind of thing jumped out in front of my truck. It's pretty cool. Um, we don't see that stuff very often here. We uh, we actually jumped out for a second and looked at the tracks. He, this thing was huge. So for uh, me and my partner was looking at the tracks. And uh, but yeah, that's it, guys. I'm gonna fill out this report and we're gonna head home. It's nine o'clock at night. As always, appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to drop me a fist bump. Let me know where you're watching from and see you next time.